mac and cheese was good. Yeah. yeah, that was good. Been a while since I had some of that. Nice and crunchy on the outside. You, uh... Feel like watching a movie? Motherfuckers. <laughs> you feel like watching a movie? It's been a while since we've uh, shot a movie review. I don't watch movies. It's been at least seven minutes since we shot a movie review. <laughs> so it's time for another one. Time for another movie review. What we got what we got to watch. So um, this time. there was there was these guys and they, they did some you know, they were gonna do some things and these other guys they were like, you probably shouldn't do those things, you know. And uh these guys, they did those. I love that guy, man. The oh, old guy in the videos. Yeah. The the day crew, the night crew, message yeah. to the day crew. Yeah. That guy's my hero. Cut to him. And then the other people were like, "Hey, don't do that stuff." And then. And we're back. We're gonna watch a movie starring the late great Sid Haig. Captain Spaulding himself. A movie that he actually told us about in person because we were tight with Sid Haig like that. For five minutes. It's <laughs> <laughs> not supposed to spill the beans, man. That's a cool dude. Yeah. yeah, Sid Haig was really cool, man. You know, he was old. It sucks that he, you know, passed away, but that's yeah, what yeah, happened. Yeah, good life. Yeah, good life. You get old and uh, you pass away. It's what, you know, like. Part uh, how old was he? Like 83 or something? He was, yeah, somewhere he was in his 80s, there. He was yeah. Up there. But, um, yeah, we were sitting there talking to him, you know, about Three from Hell and House of Thousand Corpses, all that good stuff. And uh, He mentioned uh, this movie was in called uh, Hanukkah, and uh, I picked up a copy. This is um, starring Charles Fleischer. Name sounds so familiar. I don't know. It's that one guy. Yeah, it's that guy. Yeah. Uh, it says, but but it says, from dreidel to the grave. You sure that's not the Undertaker? It does kind of look like that. He just retired, so it's not him. Ooh, we got dope. Um, a Torah fine. New tale of horror. Ooh. A Torah fine tale of horror. Ooh. It's a tale of horror, I tell ya. It's about a horror story. A group of Jewish young adults are getting ready for the holidays, but. Yeah, they're in. For they thought they were in for a festival of. I am fucking it all up. Yeah, I was trying to. I was trying to be funny, and I failed. Eight days of Christmas. Suck it. Uh, decent. Okay, starting over. Take two. A group of Jewish young adults are getting ready for the holidays, but are in for a festival of frights. Frights. Eight days. Not lights. Within the... With... Man. You're good. <sighs> Maybe more beer will help. Yeah. You can't go bad. With the help of a wise rabbi, they deduce that they are being targeted because they have violated the Judaic law and that their only chances... Man, this is worded so weirdly. And that their only chance of survival is to embrace their faith. So they need to embrace their faith to get saved from some bad things. Embrace. Yeah. But it's got Sid Haig in it. And, um, you know, we're going to check it out. And it's got The Undertaker. And it's got The Undertaker, yeah. So, uh, yeah. Um... Kane Hodder was the stunt coordinator. Ooh, nice. Deja vu, man. It feels like we already talked about this somewhere. We did. Huh. Huh. And we're back. Ask me anything. Q&A. Ask me anything. 
I like to go for long walks to the post office with my mom. And I like to say the same thing every time. Hey guys, you want to watch Hanukkah with us tonight? I'm so proud to announce that I'm going to be in another awesome, awesome movie. I, I just going to be great. <laughs> All right. No, it's not. Oh, suck. So we don't get too far off topic. We're going to watch a movie, Hanukkah, starring... Uh, oh, nice. Said, hey, yeah, it's got a little, like, thing here. Watch it on screen. I wonder if we can find this on Tubi yet, but I don't want to watch commercials. But it's got... Um, is that the Star David? Is that what they call it in, in the Jewish, uh, you know? I think so. Congregation stuff, whatever. Uh, but there's like a starry star. So, um, I think we should guess this. Is that the Star of Bethlehem? I don't know. No, I don't think so. No. I don't know. I don't star know. of your mama? Because Bethlehem is where Jesus was born, and these folks killed him. <laughs> Sopranos. I'm sucking wind. And he's rolling in it with that fucking Christ killer. <laughs> what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Um, so, uh, I think we should uh, guess what this is gonna be. Eight days and of if, Christmas. If you remember, the scale is zero being the best movie of all time, all the way up, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, Ferguson being the worst. <laughs> So, you are you guessing eight? Is that what you're saying with the eight days a night? You're guessing it's going to be an eight? Eight, eight days of Christmas? Or eight days of Christmas? Man. It's probably an eight on the scale. That's what you, I'm going to guess eight. You're going to guess eight? Man, as much as I want to like this, I have on good authority that it sucked. <sighs> and yet you still paid 16 bucks for it? Well, it's to, you know, you know, it was Sid Haig, man. Oh, well, yeah. You know, I like the guy. I wanted to have it. Big up to Sid so, Yeah. Sid Yeah. Uh, Caroline Williams. That name sounds familiar, too. God. Uh, I got to guess different than you because we got it. We can't be. I'm going to guess a nine. I'm going to guess a nine. You're and, guessing and eight, you're you're guessing your guess nine. is probably going to be better than mine. Yeah. So, anyways, let's start the show. Let's start the show. Here we go, into Hanukkah land. Two hours later. <sighs> My sources were right, that movie fucking sucked. So, let me tell you. Fluffy kind of called it when he said and thought fucking said Hag wouldn't be in it too long. He was dead within the first five minutes. There was a little flashback to him at the very end. And the beginning was the best part. So, this is basically the story of this movie. There's really cool kill scenes in like nudity and boobs and full veg and close-ups of bush and all kinds of stuff and great effects when people are getting killed there's all that kind of stuff and you would get like little two minute snippets of that kind of stuff but then you'd have to watch like 17 minutes of a boring stupid fucking pointless conversation <laughs> then shit's going wrong for three fucking days all kinds of people are messing People are suspected dead three fucking days, and then you decide to call the cops and ambulance? <sighs> this movie was an hour and 45 minutes long, and it fucking made me mad. I, you know what? This could have been, like, like, seriously, seriously, seriously... They could have cut 45 minutes off and made a one hour movie. Oh, yeah. At the, least. The parts were the action, the killing, the effects. You know, there was lots of nudity. But it was all, like, if you just take out all the pointless bullshit. Like, there was, there was a black guy. I, I think his name was Joshua. 
At first we thought he was gay, because the guy made, I guess it was a joke, saying he was in the shower because he fucked him. But I guess it was a joke, because he turned out he wasn't gay. But we thought they really were at first, because was, the joke wasn't well executed. Whatever. But anyways, this guy Josh goes to like dinner with his girlfriend's mom. The girlfriend doesn't show up because she's at this three-day party. Why do we have to go back to them like four fucking times to this guy Josh and the girlfriend's mom having dinner? It didn't add to the story at all. This movie, there was so much fucking filler in this movie. It just drove me nuts. Yeah. So much shit that had nothing to fucking do with this movie. You had a killer who was mad. He was killing Jews because they were bad Jews. Okay, that's what he was doing. We get it. You got a reason. He doesn't like uh, bad Jews. Okay, kill him. You, that's your thing. Kill him. That's fine. But then some Captain fucking Save a Jew shows up, this fucking idiot with one ear that sticks way the fuck out, kind of weird like. And he's like, I'm going to tell you long, 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 boring fucking stories that'll fucking tell you how to fucking save yourselves. And then the end, this end was worse than the fucking end of It. Like, it was actually a pretty good movie till the fucking director or writer or whatever became a fucking retard at the end and decided we would kill this fucking clown who killed everybody by talking to him. How do we kill the fucking killer in this fucking movie? Oh, we're going to fucking talk to him. Let's fucking talk to him. Let's have a nice fucking conversation. Who the fuck, if I'm a killer and I'm killing you and you try and talk to me, you're not going to talk to me because I'm going to stab your fucking throat in. Or I'm going to put a fucking knife through your fucking eyeball. I'm not going to stand there and fucking talk to you like a fucking retard. This movie sucked. I'm angry about this movie. I'm disappointed. Sid Haig was great. We got to see his fucking penis. It was awesome. <laughs> fucking. But after that, if, it wasn't, if there wasn't a fucking tit being chopped off, if there wasn't fucking a naked chick fucking tied up in chains and shit, this movie was boring as all yeah. fuck. Boring as fuck. What, what made this movie was, in fact, that Sid Haig was in it. And then, near yeah. the end, the infamous Dick Miller. Dick Miller. Who was in all kinds of, like, um, I forget, Dante. I'm guessing he's dead, because they the, put a tribute to him. The director, of, the director of Gremlins, he had Dante in all his films. All his films. And, and he was dead. Dante was played by Dick Miller? Yeah. Okay. Okay. No, da Dante was a director. Oh. But he had Dick Miller in all his movies. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. okay, okay. Well, uh, okay, and so another uh, one kind of cool thing about this movie, which it was funny, because like Sid Haig, who they had for like five minutes in the movie, they also had uh, Sarah French in this movie, who met in person. Very, very cool person. She fucking wanted me and fucking the wet one to go to this fucking party with her, and the wet one wanted to go home. Suck it, Brennan. I just threw you under the bus. Suck it, suck it, suck Woo. it. Woo. Woo. Under the Woo. bus. Woo. Yeah. Woo. Fucking Sarah French was like, you guys ought to come. We're going to this fucking party. Fucking me and fucking Brennan were... She wasn't talking to anybody else. It was specifically us. So, anyways, wet one didn't get wet that night. But uh, Sarah French, very cool person, very cool person. This film didn't do her justice because I don't know if the you know the you know the ratio was off or whatever. But she's a very be very beautiful woman. But um, you know, anyway, she was in this. They like they had budget for her to be on set for like four hours, and so she walked in, yelled at people, and then later we seen her outside, boobs out and a little star on her chest. So Bing! if you like, if you're a fan of Sarah French and you want to see. This is the movies. Just fast forward to it, because the rest is just fucking dog shit, man. Ugh, so boring. I, I hate movies that don't have points, you know, or fucking, you know, just drag. That's yeah. my biggest pet peeve. Drag. Like, so many people got mad at me about what was that shitty, 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 boring fucking movie we just watched that you loved from the 80s, and it was fucking drag. Fuck you. Crypto Show was great. Drag. It dragged it, for you. Dragged. It dragged like your balls do in the toilet water. It does. It does. They drag in there. It gets cold. 
But anyways, this movie, it could have been so much better if they would just shorten it. I mean, like, if this would have been an hour, if you would have took all the good parts of this and then a little bit of conversation and made it, like, 70 minutes instead of a fucking, instead of, a, like, 105 minutes, yeah, would have been good. Would have been good. Could have fucking... The, uh, uh, to me, this movie right here, there was some shots that Dustin Ferguson could have done himself. Yeah. So there were some shots in this that were so bad, but for the most part, it was fairly well shot, fairly well lit. The effects were amazing, were on point. Oh, yeah. Whoever did the special effects when they were cutting people up was good. Uh, but the writer needs to fuck the fuck off. Fuck you, writer. Whoever you are, you suck. Flat out, whoever wrote this movie sucks. Never write another movie again. Please. Please. Read it. Well, like I did before we watched it when I guessed an eight. Yeah. I think I, I think I estimated an eight. You guessed an eight, I guessed a nine. I'm gonna give it a ten. Yeah. 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 So here's the thing. When you're, you know, kind of figuring out ratings, you know, um, so you kind of want to you want to have like reasons why you rate some. To me, movies always start at a six, because that's right in the middle. So, and you look at the positives. Okay, well there was you know a whole bunch of different like naked chicks. There was a whole bunch of great special effects. So if you give a point for each of those, now you're down to five. But I was bored off my ass. A lot of different times. The story didn't make sense. The three fucking days at a party and they couldn't find a fucking ride home. And then they call an ambulance after people been dead for three fucking days. And then the guy wants to talk at the end instead of fight the killer. Oh, I'm sorry. This movie is a fucking 10. It's fucking horrible. It's fucking horrible. If it weren't for the fucking good effects and the boobies, this would yeah. be like an 11.75 damn near in the Ferguson sphere. <clears throat> so, yeah. Thank this, God for I am, boobies. I am so, yeah. No, if, if, um, if all the girls would have been wearing their bra in the shower instead, no, it would have been a 12. <laughs> Unbelievable. Who takes a shower with a bra on? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. But then, like, as a movie, as, like, a filmmaker, if I fucking, if somebody paid me to make a movie and they wanted, you know, a it fucking... Would, it would have been, like, shoulder height. If you were making a movie about a horny guy having a beach party <laughs> and there was a girl in a shower, you would think you would see a boob, right? Yeah. And if the fucking guy that paid you the money to make the movie, when he received the movie and saw a bra on in the shower, and you didn't get paid the rest of the money and you wonder why, <sighs> now how are you going to use your <laughs> in the movie? No, we're not going down that road, but oh. anyways, yeah. <laughs> fucking anyways. This movie sucked, not quite as bad as Ferguson, but this was bad. I am very disappointed in this movie. I had real high hopes for it. Um, there was a few things and it's like, man, I could take this movie and I could edit it down to probably like 45 minutes and have a pretty good movie because yeah. there was lots of good parts of it, but there was 10 times more boring parts. So anyways, what did you, I rated it 10. What'd you call it? 10. Okay. It's an even 10. How about yeah. them apples? Yeah. All right. It's okay. a perfect 10. Okay. Um, give us a thumbs up on this. Because we saved your asses from watching this dog shit. So, thumbs us up. Give us a big props for not we, letting us... We drink a lot of beer for this movie. Yeah, a lot. We drink a lot. We're almost Fucking, done. I'm almost out of beer. Yeah. Um, hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. <sighs> uh, would you uh, tell them what's going on? That's the end of the video. So, that's the end of the video. Huh? Bye bye.